Hey everybody, it's Just Plants here and brought you a new video. Today we're mostly going to be talking about be answering some questions that everybody's been asking me since my first video. So let's get into it. First one is called Fan Favorite. So I can't wait to see your begonias. I can't wait for everybody to see my begonias. Like a lot of them are beautiful. A lot of them are just like kind of weird, but I feel like you already don't like them a lot. Next question, Tanya. How crazy does David drive you with all the plants? And what would you say the biggest difference between your plant taste? It doesn't really drive me crazy. Not at all. It's more like making it very naturey inside the house and looks pretty much beautiful. Like I know some, like he had these, uh, I don't know if you saw that, but it, he has like a plant like vining across the wall, like in the living room. It looks pretty cool. I mean, I don't mind that. So, I mean, I, I like everything he does. I like wh whatever he decorates, whatever he likes, I'll go with it. Same thing with me. Like, if he likes what, how I'm decorating my room and how I'm like presenting my plants, then, you know, he'll go with it as well. And what would you say the biggest difference between your plant taste? For my plant taste, it'll be more colorful and weird. David's more like beautiful and very unique. Mine's more like beautiful and weird. I told David, I was like, these plants, it gives it like a very spooky and very like weird vibe. So it makes it good for like the Halloween season. Some of these begonias can be very like good for like the Halloween season. I have a few that, you know, I've been wanting to take pictures of. And I have a few that could go with Christmas. I have a few that can go with like, like the New Year's. I have like, it still goes all around. And that's what's unique about these begonias. It goes with everything of every holiday. And that's what I like about them. It says breaking Berkey's is so fun. I love that you share the plant interest now. I really do. I really, every time I go to like Rainbow Gardens or something, like I always like look for begonias. I'm just like, where are they? And then when I do find them, you know, there's some of them that I've had before. And then, you know, I would like to get them again, but our budget. <laughs> But yes, like I, uh, I'm like interested in just like begonias, and I do have some like Brazil that I have, and I do have uh, I think a Swiss cheese plant. I think that's what it is. I think I have them, and I have a strawberry begonia, and I have some other ones that y'all would like to see. A few. <laughs> Mars F said, "Nice to see you. you're having your own channel. Can't wait to see what you got planned. How many begonias do you have?" Mm, a lot. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, I think ten for right now. No, eleven, twelve. I got twelve, and I got some other ones and cuttings. And guys, I have something going on right now, and you're gonna be like amazed. This tiny Wallace said, can't wait to see your begonias. Do you have a wish list plant list? If so, what's on it? Congrats on your channel. There's a few that I've been looking at. I like carnivorous plants. I really, really do. But the only thing is with carnivorous plants, they're very dramatic and they're very, like they pretty much need like a very specific environment. Now, let me tell you about this. Like my environment in my room, it's good. For like these begonias because it once you put these begonias in here they're they're, all, they're automatically gonna thrive and it's kind of weird because my boyfriend said i think he he said it in a video he said it's weird how like my begonias thrive in my room and there's one that's been i had for like like almost a year already and then i'm surprised it hasn't died at all i'm just like how they thrive so perfectly in here some are like kind of you know iffy they're like getting there but majority of them are like pretty much thriving and i'm just so surprised how they're, they're just alive for this long i'm just like either i'm doing something good or my room is just that good everybody like these plants some of them like make me like really really happy some of them are really weird to look at but the ones that i have on my wish list let's see if i can pop one out now let me tell you this i've had like two carnivorous plants that i have bought from Shades of Green. They were the Dres Drosera Capenises. They were good like the first month. After that, it starts to like really like die. Like, you know, start to get black and everything. And I'm just like, it's hard taking care of carnivorous plants. 
it's really, really hard. I, f I kind of find that carnivorous plants are very hard to take care of if you don't have the right environment for them. And with here, it's more like it, it's, it fluctuates. Like my room can be really, really cold, you know, when I'm doing like, when I'm in here and watching my videos or like um, watching my shows or, or playing my video games, it's, it fluctuates. It can be really, really cold or it could be really, really hot. And sometimes I have the fan on just to keep the air circulation going inside the room. If it's like hot, I'll turn on the fan, uh, air circulate the room, make sure like the air stays fluctuating through the entire room. But it, sometimes it'll just be really, really hot. Or I keep my room in between. Like when I'm gone for work, I'm mostly just like, uh, the room is just mostly hot. Uh, sometimes I leave the fan on, some days I don't. I usually keep the windows fully opened during the day so I can get my plants to have the sun that they need. And surprisingly, they've been growing really, really good. There are a few cuttings that I'm going to see that have successfully propagated and y'all be very proud of me because that, that I've never thought in my life I would try to like that when I will successfully prop, propagate like a plant, it would work or it will stay alive. Cause like I have experiences like doing propagations on my begonias before and it was difficult. Some, I was looking at different methods by doing leaves. Like um, I seen somebody you cut like, there's like the leaf is like this. They cut the edges, then they put the leaf instead of the soil. That's when it starts sprouting new um, babies. I seen that method and I seen another one where they just uh, cut the stem of the, the leaf and it's propagated in water and then it works but it only works for a certain extent because i have tried those two methods the first one no the second one it worked but only for like a couple of days after that the begonia starts to like die down like it had roots and everything like it, the roots were like 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 this big like they were like you know growing and everything but they start to like die down and then just like after like the fourth day it just completely died but i found this other method which uh, my boyfriend had taught me is the sphagnum moss method so basically you get like a little container then you put sphagnum moss and you wet it moist it and the, the good thing about sphagnum moss is that when you moist it it has air circulation with the two so i put the, um, the plant with the cutting inside of the sphagnum moss leave some room for air circulation but leave it like like um, leave it touched with some sphagnum moss so after a while it starts growing its roots and it, very perfectly and then when i put it in soil it, like i'm gonna tell you this guys it started to like blast out like with babies and after like a couple weeks i think it's after two weeks after my first cutting i started putting like a lot of babies and i'm gonna show you like right now already so basically this was the first one yeah and i have it kind of by the window to be getting like majority of like sun it looks really cool. And that's just from a cutting. Beautiful. Same thing with this one. This one was after the other one. Really cool. But like again, I do have my wishes plant is a Drosera caponesis. And I do have another one. It's a sundew. I do have another one called the Drosera spatula. I do like those two to begin with. Like I said, it's more like having the best environment for them. I do have some begonias that I want to get into. Now, I do have majority of these. There's some that are really, really like beautiful. And you, there's some of them that you probably have seen in like the big box stores and everything. I would like to get another one of these. This is a really beautiful plant to begin with. And it'll be awesome to get this again. Because I had it before, then it, I think it died. I was back when me and my boyfriend were living at his mom's house. I had one of these, but it I do have another one that looks just like this, but it's a different hybrid. But I'd like to get this one again. And this other one is called Begonia Amphitheisks Red. And then this one is another one that I have seen a while back. But I, I think I saw it at Rainbow Gardens one time, and then I completely didn't even... Ooh, I'm so mad to this day. Uh, it's called the Begonia Ampia 6 Red. 
it's $29 in Etsy and just look at that like how would you not want to get like how would you not want to get this plant like look at it mm. this is another one it's called a, it's a four inch begonia king and gina and just look at it it basically looks like a turtle like from if you think about it from the back it looks like a turtle shell and that's another one why i want this one just look at that it's four dollars and it's low on stock i'm planning to get down pretty soon those are the ones that I have on my wish list right now, and I plan in the future to get them. And hopefully, I can do more propagations and make more and put it to my family. The next comment says, "From Grace, it says, how cool you have your own channel now. Did you have any interest in plants before you met David? How do you feel about living with so many plants? Did it take getting used to, or was it no big deal? Good luck on your new channel. Thank you, Grace, for that amazing, beautiful comment." Um, I didn't really have interest in plants before I met David. Uh, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, when I was more like more younger, I always thought like plants as like like weeds, you know. Like, and then I'll pretty much see like plants like the same thing. But not anymore. David pretty much got me into like you know plants when I met him. Like when I met him, he was into like plants. But more down the line, when we got to know each other and everything, he had a lot. And he kept getting a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Now, I'm not, for me, it's like a no big deal. It really isn't. Because like the more like I'm with them and hang, and hang around with them with this, it's just like, it's amazing to see how a person can be so into plants and like care for them and, you know, and take care of them. It's like from when he started his first YouTube channel, way back if you were if you were like there when he started like he was like buying a lot of plants and he was like basically like a little kid in the candy store like first he's a like a he first sees a plant then he gets it and it's pretty cute and then i like that a lot you know what i mean and i have no i have it doesn't really bother me at all i got used to it after a while next comment says anthony lawson welcome so excited to learn the word of begonias what is your favorite begonias your least favorite begonias how do you find it living with a plant person who focuses on plants that many and not begonias what has been your biggest argument over begonia uh, over plants can we see the next video now to start off with that first question what is your favorite begonia my favorite begonia i have all of them they're all my favorite but if you have to be very specific on that i do have one it would have to be this one I had got this one from Shades of Green and it's been doing amazing. It's one of these plants that I have had for a long time and I had no issues with. Look at that. It's beautiful. But this plant I've had for a long time and it hasn't really died on me at all. And it's pretty amazing. The way I keep it alive is just by giving it fish tank water. Like every every other couple of days. And it's been amazing. And then for the next question, it says your least favorite begonia. My least favorite begonia. Ooh, that's a tough one because I love every single one of them equally. But if you have to be very specific on that, I can show you. It would have to be this one. This one has been giving me problems for a while now. And you can see how it's like stretching to the side. And I already know some of you are gonna say, it was probably because it was looking for light and you probably had it in the corner. It was in the middle of the, it was in the middle of the shelf. The shelf is the middle, the middle shelf is basically directed pointing to the window. And that window is just getting more sun to the middle plants. There are some on the left are getting some sun. There's some on the right are, are getting some sun as well. Now I'm planning to fix that and moving the shelf more to the right because my sh the windows are like this. There's one window right here, one window right here. One shelf, one shelf. Now this part of the shelf, this other side, like this little gap right here, is I only have a few plants on there. And the only ones that are there, the strawberry begonia, and then the other new begonia that I've just gotten. All from over here, all up to over here, nothing but sun. This one was like right here, in the middle. So it's been giving me problems because this one was next to another begonia and the other begonia has been doing like really, really well. 
It's just this one that's just been giving me problems. And it's gonna need some more water soon. So I'm gonna be taking care, try to take care of this as much as I can. And we'll go from there. And the next question is, how do you find it living with a plant person who focuses on plants that are mainly not begonias? Um, it does, it doesn't really bother me. And it's just more like a different interest and seeing my boyfriend into like more variety of plants is more unique. Like I would say unique only for the fact that he's more into everything. I'm more like neutral with my interests. If I pick something, I stick with only that. So if I just pick just begonias, I would just stick with begonias. Like I do have begonias. I do have some Brazils that have we gotten from um, Lowe's that he, my boyfriend bought me. And I do have some like succulents and cactuses that I have on the windowsill that are doing really, really good. Um, so it's just for me sticking with a, like a little variety. I always stick with that. And then to be honest with you, it doesn't really bother me. It's, it's amazing how we both have different interests, different tastes of plants, but at the end of the day, we still connect with each other on the same passion that we both have. What has been your biggest argument over plants? My biggest argument? Uh, I think I've had a few with my boyfriend. Um, I have told him, because he says, he told me my plants would not thrive in my condition in my room, but I proved him wrong. You know, I, I've had these begonias, some of these begonias I already have for, I, I, there's like two, two of them I had for like a year, some for like six months, some for seven months, and they're doing okay. And you know, he told me like one time, like your plants are not gonna thrive, it's too cold, or it's not getting enough sun, but I'm just like, they're thriving a lot. But it's the only argument that I have. Other than that, it's pretty much neutral with our um, with our agreements. Alma Green said, congrats on your first video. Thank you, girly. What was your first plant and why, how did you get it? My first plant was not a begonia. My first plant was never a begonia. It was a cactus. And it was like one of those generic ones you find from like Lowe's. Like, it's like a little green one and on the sides have little pups growing inside of them. That was my first one. And I took care of it. I had it in inside for a while. Turns out, you know, the more you learn, you know, when you're in the, the world of plants, that cactuses can't be really inside without light. Cause I had it inside without light for a while and I took it outside, completely burned. I was like, after like a few hours in white, after that, I'm just completely burned, dried out. And I was just like surprised. I was like, how, how does it go like from this to this to this in like not even 12 hours? And it's scary to even think about that. But yes, my cactus was my first plant. The next comment said, Carla, hi Israel, welcome to YouTube. Thank you, girly. I like begonias too. Same. And I think they are weird and gorgeous. And I can't wait to watch your videos. Happy Wednesday. Thank you, Carter, for that amazing, beautiful comment. And I think begonias are weird and gorgeous. And I would say beautiful as well. You know, they're very unique and they're very flashy. And I feel like it's like Halloween for them. For me, it's like they're, they're in Halloween every every day and, and almost the entire year. You know, they're wearing different colors. They're wearing different, but they're putting out different designs and everything. And it's just like, it's very unique. And some plants, they go straight with the same color, same pattern. Begonias is all different. And I'm pretty sure there's other plants that have different varieties and different like colors and everything. But the ones that I've seen mostly are begonias that are very just unique and, and very different and then very like colorful. And then that's something I've never seen before in a plant. The next comment said, I have a lot of begonias that green painted leaf Rex begonia is a super slow grower. They don't like to be moved once adjusted to an area and definitely don't overwater. I have begonias before um they didn't like to be moved around too much only for the fact that when i remember i moved i moved one begonia to a new location and all of a sudden it starts to like dry out completely like die it starts to lose its colors and it was weird because i was like i moved it and it's like becoming 
like very weird. So ever since then, I don't really like to move my begonias. The only times I move them is just inside my room. I like move them from like my, my shelf to my counter or I just put them over my collection of my figures are at. But the majority of the part, that's where I most, mostly keep them. Another comment said, when you went to the cactus section, it made me realize you have a different taste than David. And that's nice to see it. I love cactuses. Only for the fact that I like I, I like cactuses, and then some plants are very are, I'm very impatient when it comes to like plants. You know, if I don't see progress, you know, I tend I tend to like you know push the plant away. But it, I'm starting to like learn to like be patient with my plants because some of them are growing really really fast, and that's amazing with my cuttings. That's what I'm saying. And being patient is key in order to have these plants in your in in your environment in your life. Um, but yes. Cactus are very, are very slow growing plants. And with that, it's pretty much puts me in a position where I have to be patient. And I don't mind that. Cactuses are very beautiful to look at and very and joyful to experience, you know, to be able to grow them. By seed, it's kind of difficult. But if you already have like a, like a pack cactus, you bought from like Lowe's, put it in the soil, in the ground in the backyard, let it thrive in the sun. That's what I always say. But other than that, guys, I, that will be it for the Q&A for right now. Also, if you have any more questions, I will set up a little link where y'all could be like sending me questions and I'll be answering them down the line.